Hello, audio listeners of the Tom Green Podcast. It's been a while, uh, but we're going to start posting audio again from the Tom Green Podcast all over the place, everywhere, everywhere that you can listen to podcasts. Up, uh, up till now, in the last couple of years, actually, we've been just posting the podcast on uh, the YouTube channel, and I haven't really, really even been doing it that much. Just started starting it up again, kind of. Slowly, ramping up slowly. Uh, I've been moving to the farm here in Canada. After 20 years in Los Angeles, I returned to my home and native land, and I've set up a homestead here. I moved into an existing farm, uh, and I'm settling in. Got a mule named Fanny, a donkey named Kia, some chickens, and of course Charlie, who you all know. And uh, it's great to be home. It's winter now in Canada, and you can watch all of our uh, adventures on the YouTube channel. Let's go to the Tom Green YouTube channel. My name is Tom Green. That's me. You're listening to the Tom Green Podcast. And um, I'm going to start having guests. Um, the podcast is going to be uh, mostly me saying what we're going to start doing soon, uh, and then we'll never actually do it. No, that's not true. No, we will get to it. Um, we have actually done a lot. We've built the first ever solar-powered podcast studio in a barn. I'm not in the barn right now. I'm in my, my living room of this uh, 1857 log cabin in the wilderness, but uh, it's pretty cold outside, right? Not not that cold, though. For Canadian winter standards, it's actually quite balmy, but um, it is winter. The barn is unheated. We do have electricity in it now because of our solar-powered battery system. Thank you to Battleborn Batteries for making that happen. Incredible lithium battery uh, system. Check out Battleborn Batteries, a division of Dragonfly Energy. Thank you. Out of Reno, Nevada. Shout out to Brandon, Derek, and Tyler. But I think we'll start taking some phone calls soon on the podcast. That's one thing I want to get, get going on. Uh, in the meantime, we're just continuing a series of elaborate technical tests uh, to bring us to the forefront of the technological internet universe, uh, the forefront of, the, of the, the tip of the spear in the independent broadcast universe, now broadcasting, or very soon to be broadcasting off-grid. We've already run tests, several technical tests. You can watch them on the YouTube channel, my interview with my dad, Richard Green, Captain Richard Green. Um, you can see that. And um, looks good. The light coming through the slats, the slats of the, uh, of the barn. That, that unintentionally sounded dirty. Um, the slats of the barn. The slats of the barn. Got a lot of slats in your barn. Anyways, slats, slats. That's a, a funny word. We're gonna try to experiment with uh, funny, non-traditional words here on the podcast, like slats. And uh, I'm going to attempt to say them over and over again. And uh, then we're going to measure the statistics on the, uh, on the algorithm and on the uh, viewership and see whether the numbers of viewers go up or down the more I say a particular word. Uh, and then we'll, we'll cross-collateralize that with uh, data in, uh, on the internet and uh, try to come up with a series of words that are appealing to, uh, to our audience, and then we'll say them over and over again, like delicious cheese sandwich. 
we've already done extensive testing on, and we know that people do like when I say delicious cheese sandwich. So we'll be doing more of that. But I want to see if slats is one that uh, also takes off with, uh, with our community here. Is this a slat community? Is this a community of people that like the word slats being repeated? Or have numbers drop now to an immeasurable, insignificant uh, figure? And uh, we learn from this, though. If, if that's the case, when we look at the, when we look at the, uh, the ratings, I may choose to never use the word slats again. Even personally or in my private life, I may never use that word again. I don't want to annoy people in my private life. Just like I want people listening to this show, I want people to listen to me in person. If I encounter somebody on the street and I start talking about my slats in the barn, and I can tell they're visibly uh, annoyed I'm not going to repeat the word slats over and over again, unless I don't like the person, of course. That would, of course, maybe be a subtle way to get somebody to, to leave without having to offend them. Just keep saying the word slats over and over again until they kind of, well, I got to get going. It was good seeing you. Kind of drift off into the, into, the, into the universe. I have a feeling, though, that probably on the street, if I were to say the word slats, over and over again, I feel like probably people would stick around. Um, I would. I know I would. If I ran into somebody I hadn't seen in a long time and he was telling me about the slats in his barn and then just kept repeating the word slats over and over again, slats, slats over and over again, I'd probably stick around. I'd probably, I'd probably change. I'd probably look at my watch, maybe send a few texts, push back a few meetings just so I could spend a little more time with this person who felt the the need to say the word slats over and over again. I love over enunciation though, so maybe I'm not the best uh, gauge of whether or not that's a sort of a mainstream. Anyways, I don't know if this is the kind of thing we're gonna do in the podcast every week. I don't know, maybe this is not a good idea. We're gonna have guests as well. So that'll be good. To start talking a lot about my experiences out here in the country. It's been really exciting. Bonding with Fanny and Kia. My mule Fanny is just doing so great. I, I shouldn't say my mule, the mule Fanny. Fanny the mule. Fanny the mule is doing great. We are just really hitting it off. And uh, she's gotten so much easier to saddle, so much easier to control. She's not a, you know, a trail riding pony. She's a huge animal, and she has a definite attitude and a mind of her own. And uh, I would say that it's somewhat ambitious for me, having had no experience with horse riding, essentially no experience to have uh, taken on this challenge, but it's gone quite well. Uh, I, th I attribute my time as a skateboarder. Uh, so much of my life was spent riding a skateboard, and I feel there's a lot of similarities between, between riding a mule and skateboarding, believe it or not. When things get bumpy or when she gets a little out of, out of hand, I, I, I feel that skateboarding instinct of, of balance and counterbalance kicking in, and I've gotten quite uh, comfortable up there. I've fallen off twice, but that was early on. I haven't fallen off lately um, because uh, I now know how to hold on to the reins, so that's good. Uh, we are experiencing a few uh, issues with wolves around here. Uh, they've been coming up to the property. I'm concerned about that. I'm probably going to be uh, uh, doing a DNA test on some of the scat, some of the scat that is uh, showing up on the property. I've been going to go out and... Uh, take some scat samples. Um, scat samples. And um, be sending them into a Ministry of Natural Resources biologist who is going to do some DNA testing and tell us exactly what we have here. I mean, we do believe there's a 
a pack of wolves on one side of the property, a pack of coyotes off on the other side. Uh, this is based on trail camera footage, um, close, up close visual inspection of the trail camera footage. And yesterday, day before yesterday, five of these monstrous canine wolves, they must have been wolves. You can see them on my live stream on Instagram. Came running up to the property. Charlie, my dog, was, was going nuts. Um, she was saved by her pet safe collar I have where she, she ran towards these coyotes or wolves or whatever they were. And as she was running towards them, uh, I hit her beeper collar. Uh, she ignored that. And then I, uh, I had to hit the vibration collar, which is uh, it's not a shock. It's more of a vibration, but it gets her attention for sure. Um, I just took a long walk with, anyways, she turned around, came back, recalled, and it was a good thing because when she gets that prey drive and she starts chasing animals, it's really hard to get her attention. And uh, I feel really lucky to have had that collar on her. And it's been an ongoing uh, journey, I guess, training Charlie to stay close when we're out for a walk on the property. But that's it. That's all. Just wanted to do a quick check-in with everybody. We're going to test uh, the system here. We're going to upload this audio to all of the podcast platforms, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And uh, we're gearing up for a new run of podcasts. Now from my new home in the wilderness of Canada. And there's going to be a lot to talk about, a lot of new adventures here. A lot of slats, a lot of scat, a lot of fun. Um, look forward to it. We'll take your calls. And I want to encourage everyone listening to then also go watch on the YouTube channel and listen uh, on the audio. Because we're going to be doing a lot of visual podcasting here. out in the field, and if you go on the YouTube channel, you can see what I'm talking about now. There's quite a, quite a few posts that have been put up recently in the last few months, and we'll be out in the field um, with Fanny and friends. So go have a look. You can listen when you're in your cars, on your commutes to work, or on your cross-country road trips, but when you get home, there will be some visual stuff that you might not, you'll have to imagine in your mind's eye what what you're seeing but when you go home you can go shuttle up to those clips and watch them on the youtube channel and i think you'll be quite pleased to see uh, some of the beautiful beautiful visuals that we're getting here taking the cinematography quite seriously here um the conversations we have around here you would not believe uh, the level of attention to detail that goes into these technical, uh, these visual elements to this podcast. You know, I don't want to get into the 5,600 degree Kelvin ND filter, um, S and Q working in 5K but not 6K of it all. I don't want to get into the fluid head tripods and uh, stuff like that. It's overwhelming, really. But just know that a lot of attention from the uh, cinematographers here that have collaborated uh, to uh, come up with the best possible visual treatment of this podcast in the entire world of podcasting, I got to admit. Um, if you're a... I'm not, I'm not like, you know, 
I'm not trying to make some sort of a claim or anything, but I'm just saying we're working hard on it. I'm sure there's probably people that have great visuals on their podcasts, of course, for sure. But we're, we're attempting to do the same, if not better, around here. So you have that to look forward to as well when you go to the YouTube channel. High resolution images. You have that to look forward to. I know you're on your cross country road trip right now. Probably been behind the wheel for a few hours and just listening to this. And uh, I'm sure you're probably chomping at the bit to get to a computer where you can sit down and, and see these incredible images that I'm talking about, these ND filters and et cetera, et cetera. I just went for a long walk and I'm having this sort of recurring nightmare feeling that there's a like a chunk of dried snot uh, on my left nostril and I know how high definition this camera is and I'm concerned that after this uh, you know brilliant piece of commentary I'm gonna get back and look at the at the uh, at the final product and see that I have a uh, an impossible to ignore uh, booger in my left nostril. But I, I think it's okay. I think it'll be okay. Also uh, decided to um, not look in the camera today for this podcast because I, I wanted to um, focus more on, on you, the audio listening public. And I think that might be something that uh, I continue to do. I, I decided I don't want to I don't want to look in the camera anymore when we do the podcast. I mean, that's getting into the weeds a little bit, probably, probably not really that, probably not necessary that I reveal how much thought has gone into this, but like a lot of thought has gone into this. I, I sort of made a pros and cons checklist last night about whether I should look in the camera on the podcast today. There's a series of cards on a, on a bulletin board in a spare bedroom upstairs that I came up with 37 reasons why I should look in the camera and 54 reasons why I should not look in the camera. Uh, and then I sat up till probably 3.30 in the morning and just racked my brains to see if there was anything I was missing and uh, finally came to the conclusion that it's probably better to not look in the camera for the purposes that... Uh, that I'm uh, attempting to uh, to meet. So I think I made the right decision. And um, you can leave a message in the comments on the YouTube channel about whether or not you think it was a good idea uh, for me to not look in the camera today on the podcast. I'm sure we'll have a... a uh, wide range of views on the subject and uh, I look forward to uh, a vigorous debate in the comments section about this exact subject. Obviously it's a subjective choice. Uh, some people are going to like it when I look in the camera. Others are going to probably dislike it. Um, it's what freedom's all about freedom. Uh, we have the freedom to express ourselves on the internet. And I want to encourage this kind of uh, intellectual debate amongst our viewers and listeners here. If you're listening, please go to the YouTube channel and go into the 
comments section. It's a, it's a real a wilderness in a lot of ways. It's its own electronic wilderness. And I want to thank everybody for being so positive in there, so positive. We have a lot of fun. But let me know, do you agree that I should be not looking into the camera and staring off uh, sort of into a distant universe off to, the, off to the side of the camera, or should I be staring directly into it, into your into your eyes, into your soul, looking deep into your soul. Let me know. I find it's a bit uncomfortable um, when I watch a podcast and someone stares deep into my soul. But uh, maybe that's maybe that's what you're here for. Maybe that's what you're here for. I have to look away. It's you're making me. You're making me nervous. I'm doing fine, by the way. Doing completely fine. Everything's good. Things are going great in my life. I'm uh, embarking on a tour. We'll be in April uh, all throughout the United States for a full month. I'm going to be filming the entire tour for my stand up special, which is going to be on the road, cutting from show to show, be traveling with a camera crew. You'll be able to see me everywhere from Louisville to Lexington to Philadelphia to Cleveland to Detroit, Lansing, Michigan, and everywhere in between. Go uh, to my social media pages and, and look for the, uh, the tour schedule. Also, in just a few short days, I'm going to be traveling down to uh, Austin, Texas, to go to the Comedy mother Mothership, Joe, Joe Rogan's incredible hub for the stand-up comedy universe, the Comedy Mothership. Uh, I'll be performing five shows there, a full weekend of shows, and also, uh, I believe, popping by Joe Rogan's podcast and uh, checking in with him. The last time I was on the show, I we drank quite a bit of whiskey, and uh, this time... I'll be doing the show during the day uh, before my my uh, sets at the the comedy mothership, so I'm actually not going to drink. So let's see how that goes. Um, I definitely think I drank a bit too much whiskey last time on the show. Joe's got a strong pour, so <laughs> you know. Let's just say. Uh, well, I'll save the stories for uh, when I go on the podcast, on Joe's podcast, and let you guys know some funny behind-the-scenes uh, stories about how that went down. Let's just say I woke up in the parking lot. I did have my camper van with me, though, so I wasn't actually sleeping on the, on the pavement. But So that's that. Come see me in Austin, Texas. End of February at the Comedy Mothership. Come see me on, on the road doing stand-up in April all across uh, the northern, northeastern United States. Look for my uh, tour dates and uh, come see me. And uh, let's hang out. Thanks for listening. This is a technical test of the new Tom Green Podcast audio upload system. Um, stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. This is the Tom Green Podcast. Subscribe to wherever you can listen to podcasts and subscribe on YouTube. You're the best. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Thank you. We'll be back. Thank you so much.